You wanted to change the clowns as a nation, but the circus is very much still in town. The Starmer lifestyle, luxury penthouses, VIP seats and designer clobber, Kia and Lady Starmer are living the high life, far from Labour's work and class roots. Labour founder Kia Hardy fought for workers. But Sir Keir's more interested in the next glass of champagne in Arsenal's corporate box. What an arse, Null. He preaches <laughs> fairness for all in his attack on those struggling to pay to send their kids to private schools, while receiving a £20,000 donation in kind to put up his kid in a squillionaire penthouse for his kid to study for his GCSEs because apparently his child needed some peace and quiet. Meanwhile, Rachel Thieves is busy bagging free clobber too, and Angie Rayner, deputy leader of course, splurges 68 grand of your money on a photographer. Hopefully nothing to do with the infamous Ginger Growler story that hit the press under Boris Johnson. And Sir Keir Starmer's £2,400 specs Perfect, of course, for admiring their sharp new wardrobes and Angie's new snaps while pensioners freeze. Then there's, of course, his conference gaffe. I call again for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. The return of the sausages, the hostages. I mean, hey, calling for the return of the sausages instead of Israeli hostages. Really secure, more worried about your next free fry-up, we'll assume. And whilst the rest of us count our pennies for Ed Miliband's energy bills laden with eco-extremism, he's out here playing the clown in 32 grand worth of new clobber. It's enough to make Kim Kardashian blush, I tell you that. They say they're defeating Tory cronyism. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, nonsense. They've replaced the clowns, but beefed up the champagne socialist circus. Well, Andy, I assume after all of this, you're going to be doing like Rosie Duffield and ripping up your Labour membership card with glee. No, absolutely not. I was at Labour Party conference uh, at the start of the week, or at the back end of last weekend. Did and you have any sausages? I, <laughs> some lovely co honey mustard cocktail sausages uh, doing the rounds on the canapé circuit. It was delicious. Um, no, I, I, look, I can't pretend that the mood at Labour Party conference in Liverpool was one of jubilation, because it's been difficult well, a few weeks. I don't know why, Andy. But, I'm, I'm delighted, personally. But... Um, <laughs> but actually, I think when you strip away some of the nonsense of the last few weeks, actually, Labour has some really, really serious plans for the country. It's going to take time. That's what Keir Starmer was saying in his speech on Tuesday, is that it's not going to be an overnight transformation of the country because there are so many deep intrinsic, entrenched problems with this country, part of which is the fault of the previous government, part of which is just, you know, there are complex problems to resolve. I think on the freebie stuff, Labour have said, all the front benches have said they won't take clothing anymore. I think that's a good thing. Well, not by the way, he's got more by the way, Midas now. We don't no, need any. Yeah, he's got some nice pairs of glasses yes. now. But what I would say is that this is not just a Labour problem, OK? So, all parliamentarians, and it's all there. Someone said last week, Westminster scandals, if you can call this a scandal, are not, they're never uncovered, they're just noticed. All of this information has been in the public domain for years and years, and only now yeah, are people getting upset Andy, about it. Because, the Tories did it. Because the media was overwhelmingly biased towards the Labour Party. That is That's absolutely is. not true. Is, is, that is not true. Will I enjoy a sausage as much as the next man, so to speak? But <laughs> I think this is taking the Michael. Of course it is. Oh, look, I love a Sanger as well. But here is why this is a unique <laughs> problem for Starmer, and that is he's come to office without any real ideology, without any charisma to speak of. So he relies on this pearl-clutching moralism to get by. And that means he sets himself a higher standard. And now, when he hasn't lived up to that standard, people can smell a hypocrite. Sure, Boris was, you know, sleazy. Sure, the kind of Conservatives do it as well. But he has basically put the noose around his own neck. And I don't think he's going to be able to get out of it. I, I don't know why, just because um, people say, oh, well, Boris Johnson, of course we'd expect that of him, it's somehow fine. I mean, actually, one of the reasons he wasn't clobbered in the way that Labour have been clobbered over the last few weeks is because he wasn't declaring stuff. Uh, no. He wasn't being honest. Andy, Andy. He wasn't. It's true. Really? He, but he Keir Starmer, had, we've just learnt today that Keir Starmer actually got double the number of the amount of money for clothes from Lord Ali because he had he had 
declared it, but he sneakily said that it was office you know expenses, expenses for office expenses when That's it was actually for clothes. And look, regardless of whether this was in the public domain or not, whether he'd recorded it properly or not, it's the hypocrisy. You've yeah, made the same exactly. excuse that all of them are trying to make to excuse themselves at the moment. It's like, oh, the Tories do the same. And we like, we know, no one's saying the Tories are perfect and they're not sleazy. The word Tory the sleazy exists for a reason. Spent years, didn't We've they? got all of the tweets from mm -hmm. Angela Rayner, Keir Starmer, calling out the Tories as disgusting <laughs> for doing the exact same things that they are doing now. I think the receipts we just need to, are there. I think we it's need the to. hypocrisy. No one has trust in them anymore Renee, already. Renee, Elizabeth's written in. Elizabeth says, Starmer's obviously acting out Animal Farm and taking on the role of the pigs. Yeah. Now, I mean, uh, you know, you know Animal there were Farm, the pigs, George Orwell. There were the humans, and eventually you couldn't tell one from the other. And that's exactly where we are. We can't tell the pigs from the humans anymore. And it doesn't matter what the Tories did because he's been so righteous about this. Yes. And do you know what? It was Alistair Campbell, who's still a big force in his party, who said, it's the sniff test. If a story stays around for more than nine days, it ain't going away. This is not going away. No, I know, but I actually think that when you strip it all away, in the scheme of things, I just don't think it's that important. People well, care... When it's actual corruption, when it's people who are having undue influence, fine. There is no evidence that anybody is a result of this. Well, any un so undue, undue, undue influence. Should we talk about the Well, I actually think... I actually, I, actually, I actually think... So, clothing... I wish they hadn't done that. The yeah. football tickets, I would completely defend. I think well, it's totally okay. fine no, no, no. for the I Prime Minister... No, 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 hang on. For the no. Prime Minister to watch his football team no. in, and by the way, in the director's okay. box, Should I think I it's totally fine. Okay. Is it because... Because he's taking money from people who have something they need to gain from him because they are looking at football regulation. I, and yeah, Starmer has refused to recuse himself yes. from that decision. But even if, you put debate, them, even, yeah. if you, even if you put the morality aside, it is an obvious political cock-up. And if we, I agree with if we that. cock up on those little things, how can we trust him to solve those big problems, Andy, that you mentioned at the start of the episode? It's a big, it is a big cock up, I agree, and the comms has been rubbish. But actually, if you focus on the fundamentals, there are people in the background doing really good hard work that nobody's noticing. Yeah, like everyone's Sue talking Gray, about. Andy. Sue Gray, who gave herself a bumper pay rise, the same kind of pay rise that they bashed Dominic Cummings for receiving. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the, the team behind the Labour Party, they've got their, tra their noses right in the trap just the same as everything that they accuse the Tories have been. And Chloe, Andy says there that you strip this all away, you strip it all away, and actually it all amounts to there's not much there. But you'll be on some time stripping away all of the £32,000 worth of clothing, wouldn't you? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I don't know how much... What he's buying with that 32 grand, I mean, it must all be Louis Vuitton, Prada and whatnot to spend 32 grand. I mean, I, I have a go at myself if I spend a couple of hundred quid on one day shopping, buying clothes, but now I seem like a cheapskate in comparison. Just going back to what you were saying, Andy, about, you know, this is all fluff, it doesn't really matter, there's no evidence of actual in unfair cronyism influence on policy. But, but Wes Streeting, I it. was impressed when Wes Streeting came out and said, I'm going to reform the NHS, I'm going to bring in elements of privatisation, which it needs. I think that was a bold, brave thing to do. However, then we find out that he received a hundred, about 170 grand to himself from donors with links to private medical companies. So I think there's a really good argument, actually. Which makes if me think he's just doing it let's, If we're going to have a serious conversation about all of this, let's talk about maybe reforming the system, about how we fund our politics, because that is causing the perception problems here that we're all talking about and all that right. we all agree on. Well, there we are. Andy has come out for reform. <laughs> so, there we go. Just not the, reform, not the reform that you think.